Glenn. Yep, okay, one second. I was hoping to get some handover of the... Excuse me. Thank you. I was hoping to get some handover of the patient's... Sorry, what? I said I was hoping to get some patient <laughs> handover. <laughs> yeah, sure. My first patient... Uh... Code Orange, Code Orange, mass casualty incoming, clown car versus comic book convention bus, our ambulance is arriving now, Code Orange, Code Orange! Uh, the <laughs> <Russian> appendix. <laughs> Waiting a while. Hey, you forgot Mr. Wolverine's legs! Uh, wait, hey, where are those things going? Hey, come back! I don't know where he's going. Dr. McMurray is currently scrubbing the in case. <laughs> and I think that guy will be ours too. Espar. Oh yeah, they're all full coat, except for one of them. One of them's on antibiotics, not sure which one, but you know, just read the charts. Have a good night, Winnie. I know I will. Adios, muchachos! Code blue, code blue, hands on deck. Great. Now I know nothing about my patients yet again. Thanks, Glenn. Sorry. I didn't sign up for this. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been the victim of a terrible handover from a douche bar like Glenn? Hey! Do you do handover in loud places with lots of distractions? Are your handovers completely disorganized and rushed? Do people dread getting lousy handovers from you? Have you tried S-Bar? With SBAR, you will learn to structure the handovers of your sickest patients into a clear and concise format. Let my parrot tell you more. Thanks, boss. <coughs> <coughs> there are many handover mnemonics, but SBAR has significant uptake across healthcare professions. We have added an extra R. Did someone say SBAR? Yes. S stands for situation and includes who the patient is, where they are, and their chief complaint. That sounds important. Arr. B stands for background and includes a discussion of why did this happen, why now, complications that have occurred, uncertainties, and recent treatment changes. Also useful. A stands for assessment and should include the description of how the patient is currently including vital signs, whether they are improving or worsening, as well as pertinent physical findings and investigations. Here comes my favorite letter. Indeed. The first R stands for recommendations and can include what treatments to continue or stop, what needs to be followed up on, and giving anticipatory and contingency plans. Arr. The second R stands for review. This step is crucial allowing the receiver to clarify issues, discuss plans, and question where investigations should proceed. Here's an example of a more clearly organized, structured patient handover using SBAR. Hey Winnie, it's been a busy day. Have you got a list of all the patients and locations? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about our sickest patient first, okay? Okay. Mr. A is a 36-year-old male with a ruptured appendix awaiting OR. He's in the emergency room, and as I said, he's our sickest patient. He has no medical comorbidities, no inciting event, and no medication allergies. He became sick over the last 48 hours with worsening abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. The abdominal pain was generalized initially, but then became focused at McBurney's point. 
Currently, he is systemically stable, but his blood pressure was initially low, at 90 over 50, with a heart rate of 130. He was afebrile with normal oxygen saturations. We gave him fluids and broad antibiotics. Which antibiotics and how much fluid? Peptazo, with 2 liters of normal saline so far. His pressure when I last assessed him 20 minutes ago was 108 over 72, and his heart rate was 100 beats per minute. He now has a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. His lactate is normal, as was his room air arterial blood gas. Imaging showed a ruptured appendix with free air under the diaphragm. I would keep a close eye on him while we were awaiting his OR, and after his OR. He has a repeat lactate pending. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Have you drawn blood cultures? Yes, but they were drawn about an hour after antibiotics were started. And what are the plans if there is a delay in surgery? I haven't spoken to ICU yet, but he might need to go there if he worsens systemically while he is waiting for the OR. Sound good? Yeah, I'll speak to ICU as soon as we're done here. Okay, on to Mrs. J. So, that was a much better handover. There was time for discussion, and the setting was free of distractions. The communication was structured and clear. And Glenn wasn't a douche bar. Don't be a douche bar! Use a spar! And the receiver had a chance to review, seeking clarification. And don't forget, S stands for situation, B stands for background, A stands for assessment, the first R stands for recommendations, and the second R stands for review. Espar! Now go practice, or you'll have to walk the plank. Warning, use of SBAR can lead to more efficient and effective handovers, increased patient satisfaction, decreased communication errors, decreased length of patient stay, improved love life, increased respect from your colleagues, smaller drain in the healthcare resources, decreased patient morbidity, increased street cred, higher scoring rate in my MD, decreased burden on your conscience, and batteries not included.